Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're all continuing to enjoy the Easter break. And I know that over this weekend, millions of people have been able to see loved ones for the first time in months. And I want to thank you all again for your patience, because it is really clear now that this is paying off. And it's your collective efforts, our collective efforts, that have given us the crucial time and space to vaccinate more than 31 million people. And I'm pleased we've also been able to support our overseas territories so that Gibraltar has become the first place in the world, one of the first places in the world, to offer a vaccination to its entire adult population. And the net result of your efforts, and of course with the, of the vaccine rollout, is that I can today confirm that from Monday the 12th of April we will move to step two of our roadmap reopening shops, gyms, zoos, holiday campsites, personal care services like hairdressers, and of course, beer gardens and outdoor hospitality of all kinds. And on Monday the 12th, I will be going to the pub myself and cautiously but irreversibly raising a pint of beer to my lips. We're also increasing the number of visitors to care homes from one to two to allow residents to see more of their loved ones. We think that these changes are fully justified by the data, which show that we're meeting our four tests for easing the lockdown, as Chris will shortly explain. But, and you know I'm going to say this, we can't be complacent. We can see the waves of sickness afflicting other countries, and we've seen how this story goes. We still don't know how strong the vaccine shield will be when cases begin to rise, as I'm afraid that they will. And that's why we're saying, please get your vaccine or your second dose when your turn comes. And please use the free NHS tests, even if you don't feel ill. Because remember, one in three people with this virus doesn't have any symptoms. And you can get these tests from your pharmacies, from pharmacies or uh, your local test site. You can even order them on gov.uk and get home deliveries. As part of our roadmap, we're also publishing today on gov.uk the early thinking on our four reviews on the safe return of major events, on social distancing, the potential role of COVID status certification and on the resumption of international travel. We set out our roadmap and we're sticking in it. And I want to stress that we see nothing in the present data that makes us think that we will have to deviate from that roadmap. But it's by being cautious, by monitoring the data at every stage, and by following the rules, remembering hands, face, space, fresh air that we hope together to make this roadmap to freedom irreversible. Thank you very much. I'm now going to go to Chris for the slides. Uh, thank you, Prime Minister. First slide, please. Uh, the uh, government set out four tests, and these just uh, lay out some data, uh, some of the data that lie behind uh, the decision that, th that the tests had been met. Uh, the first test was that the vaccine deployment uh, program continues successfully. Uh, and I think as everyone has seen over the last uh, weeks, uh, the vaccines are being rolled out by the NHS at a remarkable rate, uh, continuing uh, to, to do so. Um, uh, over uh, 31 million uh, individuals have had their first dose. And we're now in the situation where people at the highest risk are now beginning to get their second dose. And uh, there are over 5.4 uh, million people have received uh, a second dose. So a first dose in uh, around 60% of the adult population at this point in time. So at this stage, uh, that is heading uh, very much in the right direction. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the second uh, question uh, was whether there is evidence uh, that vaccines are sufficient uh, in, to actually reduce hospitalizations and deaths in people vaccinated. Uh, we had the original clinical trials, all of which were very reassuring. Both of the vaccines we currently have, and indeed 
for vaccines we might get later in the year. Uh, but you have to see how things work in practice. Uh, and looking at the uh, data from people who've been vaccinated in uh, the four nations of the United Kingdom, uh, consistently we found a significant reduction uh, in people who have symptomatic disease, estimated at around 60%, give or take. Uh, uh, and for people having hospitalizations, so more severe disease, uh, around an 80% reduction from the first dose. Uh, that makes two points. Firstly, these vaccines are highly effective, but secondly, they're not completely effective, and it is absolutely essential that everybody, as the Prime Minister has said, who is called for a second booster dose uh, goes to take that offer up because it'll increase the level of protection and almost certainly increase the duration of protection as well. Next slide, please. The third test was that infection rates do not risk a surge in hospitalizations, which would put unsustainable pressure on the NHS. And here you can see the number of people in hospital uh, with COVID-19 in the UK. And these have been falling uh, steadily now from the peak, and they are continuing to fall, uh, which is really excellent news, because obviously uh, hospitalizations then translate into people with long-term problems and, uh, and deaths. Uh, and alongside this, the number of people who are dying has also been steadily decreasing and at a faster rate than happened in the first peak. And that may well be because of a combination of the lockdown measures that everybody in the country has been uh, involved in and done such a remarkable job on, plus the effects of the vaccines on top of that, which led to an even faster reduction in mortality. And the average number of deaths uh, at the moment is running at around 47 deaths a day. It's been uh, lower numbers reported over the uh, Easter weekend, uh, unsurprisingly, but 47 a day on average. That's down from a, a peak of around 1,300 uh, earlier in the year. Next slide, please. And the final test is our assessment of the risks not being fundamentally changed by new variants of concern. And throughout this, right from the beginning, we've said we do expect there to be variants of concern along the way, and some of those may potentially be ones that are uh, more able to escape the vaccine. So this is, a, this is going to be a continuing issue. But if you look at the numbers uh, here in the UK, um, of the ones, and we have very good testing capacity in the UK, so some of the best uh, in the world at the moment. Uh, and so uh, we have a high, a high, de high degree of confidence uh, in our capacity to test for variants. If you look at the top line with the B117 variant, which is the dominant variant uh, in uh, the UK at the moment, uh, uh, over 170,000 uh, confirmed cases. Uh, the next one down, South African variant, uh, B1351, uh, first described in South Africa, may obviously have come from somewhere else. Uh, the total number genomically con confirmed there is a much smaller number at 469. Uh, and that proportion has stayed steady over time. So there is no evidence that this is increasing. We are, however, picking up more cases uh, because of testing at borders. So as people come in, people are tested, uh, and some people are found to have variants. And then much smaller numbers again uh, for two of the other con uh, variants that we're concerned about, one uh, that was first described from Brazil, and one of which uh, was first described here uh, in England. So um, at the moment, the re although variants of concern will remain an issue, there is no reason to see, feel that this fundamentally changes our, our position. We've always known that this was a risk. So those are the four tests. And there's, of course, a lot of other data. But these are just a snapshot of some of the data we have uh, to support the government's feeling that these tests have been met.